Hi, hello, welcome to Spell Day. We're covering a spell every single day of the year from the 5 E PHB plus 3. The plus 3 are homebrew spells. We're at plus 1 at the moment. You can head back in the playlist to find it. Today's spell is Guards and Wards. Look at this. Look at this dumb, little, stupid, adorable, little, dumb bean. Look at this little guy. Oh, yeah, he's going to drag that. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, you thought you were going to drag that out of there. Little did he know I was screen recording this entire thing from my kitchen. <laughs> Fortnite, Dan. Six level abjuration, casting time of 10 minutes, range of touch, components, verbal somatic material, burning incense, a small measure of brimstone and oil, a knotted string, a small amount of number hook blood. What? Why is Umber Hulk in here? And a small sliver rod worth at least 10 gold pieces. Duration, 24 hours. Create a ward that protects up to 2,500 square feet of floor space and an area of 50 feet square or 105 foot squares or 25 10 foot squares. The ward area can be up to 20 feet tall and shaped as you desire. You can ward several stories of a stronghold by dividing the area amongst them as long as you can walk into each continuous area while you're casting the spell. When you cast the spell, you can specify individuals that are unaffected by any or all of the effects that you choose. You can also specify a password that, when spoken aloud, makes the speaker immune to these effects. Guards and Wards creates the following effects within the warded area. Corridors. Fog. You know what? We're, we're actually just gonna hop to the ending effects, and then we'll go through each of the individual effects. The whole warded area radiates magic. A dispel magic cast on a specific effect, if successful, removes only that effect. You can create a permanently guarded and warded structure by casting the spell there every day for one year. Okay, so... On to the effects now. Corridors! Fog fills all the warded corridors, making them heavily obscured. In addition, at each intersection or branching passage, offering a choice of direction, there's a 50% chance that a creature other than you will believe it is going in the opposite direction from the one it chooses. Okay, so this applies... This applies to every warded building. Or guards and wards is an effect, is it fills it with this fog, and whenever a creature is walking through it, there's 50% chance they believe they're heading the wrong direction. That... Oh man, that sucks. <laughs> I'm thinking of an adventuring party going through that, and every time they hit an intersection, the DM rolling just a percentile dice on whether they're heading the right way or not, just... I know that's not literally how it works, but I think that's the best way of portraying how it would work. Though, before we get too deep into these, when it comes to the heavily obscured, you can actually make certain people immune, or to specific effects of the guards and wards. The issue is it has to be on an individual level, it's not a general this faction, it's this person, this person, this person, or you set up a password. If you're doing the temporary one, it doesn't hurt to do the individual. If you're doing the permanent guards and wards, you better set up a password. Or if you're a solo wizard and you don't care, that's fine. But heavily obscured for enemies walking into a place, again, this is another spell that if if a castle for even just a lone spellcaster can get their hands on it, they're going to be setting this up. I'm at, you're fighting virtually blind enemies who are actively getting lost within your structure. You can pick them apart so easily. Which, speaking of, uh, this spell is likely going to be on a lot of dungeons. Or sections of dungeons, at the very least. It's not that expensive a gold cost. I mean, yeah, 6th level, but... Just casting it once there every day? That's an easier cost to bite than the 50 gold pieces per day of teleportation circle. So if a wizard's powerful enough to set up a teleportation circle permanently somewhere, they are definitely wealthy enough and have the resources to set up guards and wards. But yeah, no, the quarters is great. Doors. All doors in the ward area are magically locked as if sealed by an arcane lock spell. In addition, you can cover up to 10 doors with an illusion equivalent to the illusionary object function for the minor illusion spell to make them appear as plain sections of walls. Well, that's... that's good. That's really good. I don't need to say too much about the fact that you can set up arcane lock on a magnitude of doors built into the gold cost of this spell instead of its own spell. You can go and check the arcane lock episode. There's probably going to be a link up here somewhere. It's a good spell. Also, the ten doors with the illusionary object make it seem like it's part of a wall. That's great! False walls with an illusion that you can only really tell if you have detect magic or you can physically touch it. That's really good. Or I guess you can make some perception or investigation checks to see it funkily, but... Hidden, hidden doors built into it instead of actually setting up some kind of fake facade or a separate illusion spell and you get 10 of those similar for the arcane locks which apply to every door with this effect and this is baked into the base casting it's not one of the optional ones that's great 
hidden spooky hallways and doors and castles, it's amazing. Stairs! Webs fill all stairs in the ward area from top to bottom as the web spell. These strands regrow in 10 minutes if they are burned or torn away while guards and wards last. That's pretty good. Very briefly going through it, the spell hits an area and any creature heading through it make a dex save or is restrained. That's really good! That's really good! <laughs> well, maybe not the best if you're in just in the staircase you get trapped- because it's, it's every staircase. All stairs in the ward area from top to bottom, and if you have the password or you immune to the effect, you can just walk through it. You don't have the issue of the spell, you just pass through it. And it regrows? Alright, let's get to the other spell effects. We're gonna try and blast through these. For whenever these spells are either already out or they come up, there should be a tab up in this little corner here that mentions a link to the video. There's a lot of spells wrapped into, up into this one. Other spell effect, you can place your choice of one of the following magical effects within the ward area of the stronghold. Place dancing lights in four corridors. You can designate a simple program that the lights repeat as long as guards and wards last. I mean, it's automated magical lighting throughout an entire building. It's good. Place magic mouth in two locations. I mean, entertaining to leave a message or goad players or enemies that are traveling through a location or put on a holy statue saying some divine word or smiting down. That's more a flavor thing. Place stinking cloud in two locations. Ouch! The vapors appear in the places you designate. They return within 10 minutes if dispersed by wind while guards and wards last. Get them the cough, chokes, spew up all the, you know, all the wonderful, terrible, sickening things. Place a constant gust of wind in one corridor or room. That one... Wait a minute. I guess that's limited by the spell's range and effect area, but any room or hallway or corridor? Wait, how many? Oh, A. A single gust of wind as one of your two spell effects. Oh no, one. One of the spell effects within the warded area. Oh, who's gonna use that on gust of wind? I guess if you have a spike pit, you know, just try and push them off or a ledge. You know, someone immune, they can walk past it. If they're not, they're gonna get shoved off. Place a suggestion in one location. You select an area of up to five feet square and any creature that enters or passes through the area receives the suggestion mentally. That. That's an interesting one. That brief suggested phrase, which just, it's the fact it's not audibly said. Or necessarily has a visual cue. A player or an enemy or NPC walking past this turned and it could be drop explosives, attack an ally, yell where you are, just yell. Enemies now know where your location is or reveal yourself. Oh man, the, the, the possibilities of that one. The issue is you can only have this in one location. But those are the final ones and a lot of those spells we haven't covered in totality yet because a lot of them are on the lower end of the alphabet. That's, that's, that's work for future Zack. But in the end with those spell effects, the amount of time it lasts, the fact that you could theoretically still cast this and use this within a day, just the one time you need it. And it's only 10 gold pieces, six level spell slot. 10 minutes to cast as well for the whole area? That's not bad. It covers a good enough amount of space and making it the chance to make it permanent. If it was world building wise, this would be found in a lot of different locations and dungeons. I was about to give the rating, but we're going to talk about that part for a moment. The, use this, please use this DMs. Please remember this spell exists and use this in a variety of locations to any NPC factions or casters who have access to it. If they have the resources, gold, or just the raw materials as listed above, or listed previously. Because I forget this spell exists. And I try to use other magical traps, but this already fulfills a lot and I think that might be why it's not used. It's thematically, it doesn't match up with some things. Because sure, it's very devastating and really harsh to get through. Like I think it'd be good for a really difficult dungeon or a dungeon crawl section. A section of it, mind you. Because yes, it's still a lot of resources. You still need to have a, access to a caster who can regularly cast six level spells. If you're playing a gritty realism, that's just not gonna happen. But I can get that thematically. It doesn't match up sometimes. And the issue of the, you need a password, if someone finds the password, okay, now, now I'm actually talking myself out of everywhere having this, because if you have the password, you're virtually fine. But still, be good to use in a section of a dungeon. 8 out of 10. Eh. 8 out of 10, just because it's a series of... It could have just been one of these, but it's three base effects and then an additional spell effect on top of that. Anywhere in the area. A lot of them resetting, or always being able to activate in a certain way. Oh my god, I didn't realize about th that. That's that about the suggestion. The suggestion doesn't have a cooldown. Okay, before I lose myself, um, 
because I, I realize I can go talking about this because it involves multiple spells, so there's a lot of implications or how you can set this up in specifics. So even though there's the rating there, I'm going to ask you, write in the comments below, what kind of dungeon are you going to place or make, or what kind of mixture are you going to use, what kind of combo do your NPCs have previously made or found in your campaigns, what specific dungeon design or type would benefit from this the most? List it below in the comments, I'd, I'd be really interested.